Hello everyone, if you are a person who randomly got on this side of YouTube, I'm pretty sure that by now you have heard about gluten-free pizza, or gluten-free bread, maybe about gluten-free beer. And if you are involved in the medical field, you probably have heard about celiac disease. For both of you, I hope that with this video I will make some things more clear. Ok, let's get back to our topic. What is celiac disease? Celiac disease is an inherited autoimmune disease which affects only the people who are genetically predisposed. The symptoms are triggered by gluten, the name given to a certain protein in wheat, barley and rye. In celiac disease, the body's immune system responds abnormally to gluten, resulting in inflammation and damage to the lining of the small intestines. This damage of small intestines leads to the reduced absorption of iron, calcium, vitamins A, D, E, K and folate. Ok, why the big deal? Why everyone have heard about it in one way or another? Well, there are two reasons. First, obviously, it is one of the most common chronic diseases. Depending on the region, from 1 in 400 to 1 in 40 people have it. And the second reason is non-celiac gluten related disorders which I will be talking further on in this video, if you are still here. <coughs> the etiology is not known, but environmental, immunologic and genetic factors contribute to the disease. One environmental factor is gliadin, which is a component of gluten, presented in wheat, barley and rye, as mentioned earlier. The reason that we put immunological factor as a cause for the disease it is the presence of some serum antibodies, such as antigliadin, anti endomegial and tissue transglutaminase immunoglobulins. However, it is not known whether such antibodies are primary or secondary to the tissue damage. Genetics also appear to be involved in the celiac disease. Almost all patients with celiac disease express HLA-DQ2 allele, but only a minority of people which express this allele have celiac disease. Ok, let's move on to the pathogenesis. To fully understand me further, firstly, I must explain some things. Gluten contains of two major protein fractions, gliadins and glutenins, both of which are the main cause of celiac symptoms. As we know, proteins consist of a chain of amino acids, but what is special about these gluten proteins is that they are very rich with glutamine and proline. This is a key pathogenic factor, because the high proline content makes this protein resistant to gastric and pancreatic enzymes. Another thing that we should know is that these rich glutamine proline proteins bind to DQ2 and DQ8 which are represented on the surface of the antigen presenting cells. But wait, if someone who knows about this is watching the video will say, Hmm, the molecule that bind to HLI molecule should be negative, and gliadin is mostly positive, so there cannot be a connection. Well, in this patient, as we mentioned earlier, there are antibodies to tissue transglutaminase, which can deaminate glutamine, converting glutamine to negatively charged glutamic acid. So, now the bond is possible. Now we can move on. Gluten is not fully digested because of its high proline content, and this gives rise to a number of large undigested gluten proteins. The proteins gain access across the epithelial barrier to the lamina propria, where they encounter tissue transglutaminase and antigen presenting cells that express DQ2 or DQ8 that are ideally suited to bind those deaminated proline rich proteins. After this, the antigen presenting cells present the proteins to the T cells, which became activated and release cytokines that lead to tissue damage. Also, those cytokines activate B cells to turn into plasma cells and produce anti-gliadin, anti-tissue transglutaminase and endomysial antibodies, very well known from before. So, this is the main mechanism of pathogenesis for celiac disease. There are some other pathways suggested, like the direct toxic effect of the gluten to the enterocytes, or the pathway that includes the intraepithelial lymphocytes, which bind with special receptors 
with enterocytes and release interleukin-15, which leads to tissue damage. The pathology has two main characteristics, and those are enterocyte destruction and villus atrophy. There exists a classification by Marsh which divides the pathology in five stages, which are pre-infiltrative, infiltrative, infiltrative hyperplastic, flat destructive, and hypoplastic atrophy. The symptoms of celiac disease can develop at any age, once gluten-containing foods are added to the diet. In the past, celiac disease has thought to be a childhood disease, but it is now recognized that it occurs more frequently in adults. In children, the symptoms are failure to thrive, diarrhea, and bloating. In adults, the same symptoms like diarrhea and bloating, but also some other symptoms, such as neuropathy, arthritis, dermatitis herpetiformis. Dermatitis herpetiformis is interesting in a way that there is a cross-link between anti-tissue transglutaminase and epidermal transglutaminase. Knowing that the epidermal transglutaminase is very similar in structure with tissue transglutaminase. In that place starts the inflammation, manifested as dermatitis herpetiformis. Now something that I mentioned earlier about non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Well, I can't talk very much about this because there is not enough scientific evidence. But some people claim to have celiac symptoms even though they are not sensitive to gluten. To understand more clearer the diagnosis, I will draw an algorithm which is very useful into helping us to be more sure that we didn't miss anything in our way to the diagnosis. If the patient presents with celiac symptoms, first thing to do is to take a good medical history and a physical examination. Next, we measure the anti-tissue transglutamination IgA in the blood, and if there is no abnormalities, then probably is not celiac disease. Otherwise, we continue with endoscopic duodenal biopsy. If the biopsy is normal, we shall consider other tests, such as endomysial antibodies, HLI, or repeated biopsy. But if the histopathology of the biopsy is the same as that of the celiac disease, then we have our definite diagnosis, and we can start the treatment. And by now, I'm sure that you have guessed the treatment. The patient should only avoid food that have gluten in them, such as wheat, barley, and rye. Sometimes, if there is an active celiac disease, the patient should take some vitamins, zinc, folate, and iron. Well, thanks for watching another of our lectures. If you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Also, you can follow us on Facebook. See you in another video.